Hey, welcome New Life. These are your morning announcements. We want to say a big thank you to those who are on the panel for the Mental Health Awareness Week. We also want to say thank you to those who tuned in. We are going to have a part two coming to you in a weekend in June. So make sure that y'all stay tuned and aware for when that's coming. Happy birthday to all of those born in the month of June. Yes, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Join us every first and third Saturday of the month for getting the grip on the basics. At 10 a.m. Hey, so I just got paid and I was trying to figure out how I can give my money to the church since we're not meeting. We actually have a couple of different options for you guys. So you can use the Tithely app and send it in there or you can do the text to give option or you can mail it in to New Life Church of Winston-Salem at 1303 Link Road, uh, Winston-Salem, North Carolina, 27103. Thanks. So that is your New Life news for the week. Make sure you're out here being safe, that you're washing your hands. And that you're practicing social distancing. We love you guys. We'll see you soon. Hello everyone, Pastor Brian, Lady G here, wanting to give a big thank you to all of our leaders, to all of the people who work behind the scenes to make sure that we continually get the word and the message of the gospel out each and every week. And we also want to thank you, the member and the viewer, for just staying in touch with us here at New Life via YouTube and streaming on our social media platforms. We just want to say a big thank you to each and every one of you. We appreciate all that you do. Thank you to the volunteers and just thank you, New Life, for being people who are helping people through the knowledge of Jesus Christ. We love you. Good morning, Body of New Life, and welcome to yet another wonderful Sunday to honor and worship the Lord. Right now, we have a lot of things going on in this world, but God is still on the throne and he still reigns. And no matter what goes on, we are covered and protected because we have angels watching over us constantly. So just lift your hands right now and let's just thank God and honor him with our voice this morning, Zion. Let your praises rise from wherever you are. Lift up your voice of triumph. Lift up your voice of victory. Lift up your voice of peace. Lift up your voice of joy. Tell the Father how much you love him. Come on, Zion, lift your voice right now wherever you are. Begin to honor the Lord with your voice. It starts with us. It starts inside of us. God, we're ready for you. We're ready for a move. We're lifting up our praises to you this morning because you are the only one and true living God. So we love you and we trust you. Father, we appreciate you. Thank you for being in our lives. Thank you for keeping us. Hallelujah. Let praises rise from the inside from the inside of me may you delight in the inside in the inside of me come feel my life from the inside from the inside of me and set me on fire from the inside, from the inside of me. Cause all I want is for you, for you to be glorified, for you to be
the bad that's going on God we want to hear the peace that you're giving all of us we just want to hear your voice we've been praying we've been standing and by faith God we know there's a move of God that is going on right now even in the midst of all the chaos there is a move and you are in the midst of it God you are in the midst of every situation and circumstance, God, so we lean on you, Jesus. Not to our own understanding, Father, but to the knowledge of the truth that is in your word. We stand on your word. We know things are going on, but we know that you are still on the throne. The mountains are still being moved And strongholds are still being loosed God, we believe And yes, 
Yes, we can see it, that wonders are still what you do. And bodies are still being raised. And giants are still being slayed. God, we believe, and yes, we can see it, that wonders are still what you do Cause we are here for you So come and do what you do We are here for you So come and do what you do We set our hearts So come and do what you do, cause we need a move, yes, we need a move, sing it with me now, cause we need a move, say we need, we need a move, we love you guys. wonderful and he is kind he is merciful full of love full of forgiveness and he is faithful and just 
And we're thankful today to be in the house, we'll be, to, for being able to receive what God has for us today. Today is a new day, and it says that his mercies are new every morning. Great is the Lord's faithfulness. In your home, just lift up your hands and say, thank you, God, for being faithful to me. Thank you, God, for keeping me. Thank you, God, for keeping my family. Thank you, God, for preserving our home. Thank you, God, for meeting every one of our needs. Thank you, God, for healing our bodies. Thank you, God, for being that counselor that we need in the midnight hour when we're seeking a word, when we're seeking something to just help us get through the moment. Thank you for being in the moment with us and never leaving us. In the awesome, as we remember the goodness of the Lord, hallelujah, your soul can't help but just say thank you. Hallelujah. I'm saying thank you in my heart and with my lips. It's my sacrifice of praise. It's my lips giving up thanksgiving unto him. Hallelujah. I want to say welcome to you this Sunday morning to New Life Church. I'm here, Pastor Brian, bringing a word to you that I believe that the Lord has centered into my heart. I want you to open up your hearts to what the spirit of the Lord has to say to the church, because I believe that God in this hour is calling the church to an amazing mission and a co-mission with the Holy Spirit. And therefore we are in this series that we're calling a bold series. Um, I can tell you that when we started this series, I thought I had a grip on what I believe God had desired for us to really uh, do with this series. But I can tell you over time, as God has begun to open my eyes, even in the midst of the series, I'm beginning to see more and more what it is that God desires to do through this series. The, the Bible says that the righteous are as bold as a lion. I believe God is calling us in this day and age to bring the gospel to the world in a new way to to bring understanding to what we are seeing in our world. Um, we can't even begin to just talk about, you know, not only what is happening with disease and pestilence with the pandemic, but now we're seeing many cultural and cultural divides uh, and racism raised and injustices coming through the murder of, of, of more men, black men in, in our communities and in our world, which is raising even more and more um, questions that are happening in our world. And I believe that the body of Christ is the catalyst for the healing and the reconciling of a world. But this is going to desire and require of us to choose to be bold about where we stand, not only for ourselves, but as far as the kingdom of God is concerned, to do what is the will of God in this earth, in this season, for a time such as this. And I believe we'll see the hand of God do miracles in our world. Amen. Amen. We want to continue in this series again. We're calling Be Bold. Last week, we began to talk about guarding the heart of the kingdom. Um, in that in that first section, we begin to talk about that what Jesus was was mentioning, that a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. We understand now that the enemy wants to infiltrate the kingdom of God. He does not want the plan of God to be fulfilled. He does not want the unity of God to be uh, to be unified. And the only way to stop it is to divide it. Therefore, it is important for us to guard our hearts because we understand also that the kingdom of God does not come through observation, but it comes through the kingdom on the inside. Jesus said the kingdom is within you. Um, it also says that the kingdom is not meat or drink, but it is righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. So we understand that the kingdom of God is, is not a natural thing. It's not it's not what we wear. It's not what we drive. It's not the money in our account. It's not all of the outward things that we own. The kingdom of God is the spirit that we are of. Now, we also understand that in the beginning, when God formed the man, that he breathed into the man the breath of of life. In other words, God breathed the very nature of his kingdom into Adam and Adam understood the kingdom of God and he had the mind of the kingdom of God. And in that heart and mind of that man was the essence of God's thoughts, the very nature and attributes of his character, who God was, was in the man. But when the man fell, he was disconnected from that life. He no longer could understand God intimately 
All he had was his natural senses. And because of that, now we see the things that we see in our world. We see the oppression. We see, we see men taking advantage of one another. We see division. We see the sicknesses and the diseases that are plaguing our world. But thanks be unto God, God had a plan. He sent Jesus. Jesus came as the kingdom of God, the spirit of God wrapped in flesh. And we beheld him, the truth of God's word. And Jesus pointed to another who was to come, which is the Holy Spirit. And he said, it is, it is necessary for me to leave because if I do not leave, you cannot receive this Holy Spirit. Jesus was desiring to open up his flesh to die for us so that we could receive that spirit in each and every one of our lives. And now we have this commission on our lives that we can now do greater works than he did, because now not only is he in one man, but he is in all men around the world who will call upon the name of the Lord. And therefore, this heart must be guarded to be able to do what God is calling the church to do in this day and age, to have an intimacy with God, to declare and to decree the things of God in the earth and not only speak about them, but begin to walk them out boldly as Christ did when he walked the earth. Hallelujah. So we want to continue to talk about guarding the heart of the kingdom. And today we want to talk about some other pieces that are, are, are connected to how we guard our hearts. But as we begin, let's start today in first Kings verses chapter 19 verses nine through 18. We want to read this out of the King James version. And this is talking about Elijah. So let's go ahead and start there in verse nine. It says, and he came thither unto a cave and lodged there and behold the word of the Lord came to him and said to him what dost thou hear Elijah and he said I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts for the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant thrown down thine altar and slain thy prophets with the sword and I even I only am left and they seek my life to take it away and he said go forth and stand upon the mountain before the Lord and behold, the Lord passed by and a great and strong wind rent the mountain and break in pieces the rock before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind and after the wind an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake and after the earthquake a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire and after the fire a still small voice. Remember that a still small voice. And it was so when Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entering in of the cave and behold, the, there came a voice unto him and said, what dost thou hear Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts. Because of the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant. They've thrown down thine altar. They slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only am left and they seek my life to take it away. And the Lord said unto him, go and return thy way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when thou comest, anoint Hazael as to be king of, over Syria. And Jehu, the son of Nimshi shalt thou anoint to be king over Israel and Elisha the son of Shephat of Abimelosa shalt thou anoint to be prophet in thy room and it shall come to pass that him that escaped the sword of Hazael and Jehu slay and him that escaped the sword of Jehu shall Elisha slay Yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel, all the, knee, the knees which have not bowed to Baal and every mouth which hath not kissed him. What we're reading here today is the account again of Elisha. Elisha was a man who is now sitting in a cave. If I just be kind of get to paint this picture for you. Here's a prophet of God in a cave. But before he was in this cave, he witnessed one of the greatest miracles that any person or individual could ever witness when he challenged the prophets of Baal and he challenged them to call upon their God. And Elisha called upon his God 
after he had wet the, the sacrifice and he called upon the name of the Lord and the Lord responded with fire. Fire came from heaven. Something never seen the fire to consuming the sacrifice there. Elijah now has shown the world who the real and true and living God is. Then had those prophets killed just to, to get rid of that old way to get the people's eyes off of the, the, the gods of Baal and the idols of the world and to show the people of God that their covenant is still with the living God, Jehovah. Shortly after that, King Ahab goes and tells Jezebel about what Elijah had done. And just like that, based off of what Jezebel would now say as a threat to kill him, just as he did the prophets, we now see the man of God running for his life. He left his servant and began to go off on his own, only to experience another miracle. While he's resting, God feeds him with a miracle. God feeds him twice to strengthen him to go another 40 days to now be in a cave. And there Elijah sitting in that cave is hiding for his life. God visits the man of God in the cave. You say, why is this important? Because for many of us, the church is now and the world is now in a cave. We are in this place of solitude. Uh, the churches have seen many experiences with God. But now we sit in this pandemic. We sit in the midst of this threat for our lives. And we are now centered in this cave. And God is ministering to each and every one of us individually. There is something happening on the inside of us that is calling us into something different than what we were in before. The fear that drove us into this place is now becoming a place where we reconcile with God because in order to reconcile the word, the world, one first must be reconciled to God, a man of God who had once saw a, a great miracle of God is now driven by fear into a place of isolation, a place where he believes that he only in the world is the only one feeling this threat. He the only one in the world who is worshiping God in spirit and in truth. And God has to reveal to him that he's not alone, that there are 7000 more like himself who have not bent their knee to the idols of this world. And he's not alone. But before he does all of that, capture this. God tell asks him, why are you here? Have you ever stopped in this moment and asked yourself why we're in this moment we're in? Why am I in the place of isolation? Why, why are we in our homes like we are right now? Why, why is the situation have us driven into a place that we're in right now? Is there something that God is wanting to work out on the inside of us that needs to be cultivated, that needs to be recalibrated, that needs to be changed? Is there a mindset that has been captured for years that has become normal that God is trying to reinvigorate? He's trying to give life to. He's trying to revitalize and he's trying to change it because there's a new thing that he desires to do. There's a new appointment that needs to be set. There's a new assignment that needs uh, you, you, the able minister to step out and do but you can't do it in a cave because he's calling you out into the world to take care of something God meets him there and he says he, he says look out into the look out of the cave look out of the cave right where you are I'm here you've, you've told me that you're concerned because these things are happening in your world but he says I'm going to pass by and as he passed by a wind comes through and the wind begins to break the rocks within the mountain. Something that looks like it's a tremendous work, something that looks like to the eyes is going on. But the scripture says God wasn't in the moving of the, the stirring of that wind. After that wind comes through, it says an earthquake comes through. Now, earthquake is shaking. Things are being moved. Something is happening. You can feel the, the tangibility of something shaking in your life. Uh, the, 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 the money may be drying up or a situation in your life may be beginning to happen. And you're feeling the shaking in your world. But it says God wasn't in the shaking. After that, it said a fire came. But then again, it said God was not in the fire. And after all of those three elements came, it said a still small voice spoke. 
That still small voice is the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. This is the measure of which we as believers and, and you who may be listening today, God is calling us to hear again the voice of the Holy Spirit. Hebrews tells us, and I believe it's chapter four, that today when you hear the Lord's voice, it says, do not harden your heart. When the Holy Spirit is speaking to us in this season of isolation, he's not speaking to us to drive us into a deeper, darker place. He's calling us into a greater level and accountability to do a greater work and a greater mission in the earth. Because the assignment that is being called upon us is great, but the God we serve is greater. This is a moment where God wants to change the things that have caused us anxiety and fear and to show us that he working in us is greater than the thing that drove us into the situation in the first place. It's not about what we come out to be. It's about who we are while we're in the becoming. What is God shaping us to become in this season? And in order to see that, this relationship that we have with the Holy Spirit becomes so important in how we relate to him and how we will learn how he relates to us. We understand that Elijah, again, was in that fearful place, but God met him by speaking to his heart. There are a lot of things that we're seeing on our TV right now. There are a lot of things that are coming across our eyes and our ears. And if we're not, if we don't capture them, and if our hearts are not guarded, these things will become the infiltrating assignments that the enemy sends in to divide us against one another and to divide the kingdom of God. So the mission of God cannot be fulfilled. This is why I'm bringing this word to us because God reminded me. And now I'm desiring to remind you that we must keep our eyes on the will of God for our lives. So how do we guard our hearts? How do we guard our hearts and not allow what what's going on in the world to bring about so much turmoil that we forget the assignment that God has called us to do. Let's go to Proverbs 4, 23 through 27. Verse 23 in the New King James Version says, keep your heart with all diligence for out of it spring the issues of life. Put away from you a deceitful mouth and put perverse lips far from you let your eyes look straight ahead and your eyelids look right before you. Ponder the path of your feet and let all your ways be established. Do not turn to the right or the left. Remove your foot from evil. Here in the scripture we see at the beginning, it says, keep your heart with all diligence for out of it spring the issues of life. Anywhere you see the word diligence, you consider that this is a work. This is a process. This is a daily choice. When we wake up in the morning, our desire should be to seek first the kingdom of God, to establish our heart in what it is the will of God desires for us to do for the day. And this is something that we do again by choice. This is something that we desire by a matter of, of, of yielding our will to whatever the will of God is is because God knows what the day holds. We don't know what's going to happen throughout the duration of our day. We don't know what the next moment holds, but God has already been before us. He has already planned out our day and he wants to, to set our ears to hear and our eyes, not only to see and hear what's going on in the world, but be able to hear and see what is going on in the kingdom of God. And these things are coming by way of the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. And therefore, as people of God, we live from the inside out, not the outside in. In other words, we don't take in what we see from the outside and try to measure it against the kingdom of God. No, we come to reality of what's in the kingdom of God and we tell what's on the outside to line up to it. Amen. We line everything up with what's in the kingdom. We tell the world to look like what heaven says as the prayer says, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And once again, the enemy does not want us to know what the will of God is. He wants us to discredit the father. He wants us to not believe what the father says, because the scripture says to him that believe all things are 
possible, glory to God, and for a people of God to come into agreement and believe what the word of God says, we become an unstoppable force in the world. We begin to receive the will of God, the mind of God, the wisdom of God, the word of God, and the ability of God to do assignments that in no government system can do because the government systems of this world are made by fleshly men, but the kingdom of God comes through the will of God and the power of God. Therefore, we must seek the kingdom so that the kingdom can be established. Glory to God. So it's a diligence that we must have in guarding our heart because the heart is where all things flow out of. What we say flows out of our heart. Our imagination is a connectivity to the things that we allow to get into our hearts. Jesus said a good man out of the good treasures of his heart, bringing forth good Things The heart holds everything that springs life, who we are, the character of who we are. We understand that the spirit carries the gifts of God, which is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness and temperance. These things flow out of the heart. So if we want a, a love life or we want to walk in the love of God, we must understand that this love comes from the inside and it must be guarded. If we want to have a heart that forgives, we have the heart of a forgiving father on the inside. Therefore, the, the, the anointing on the inside of us teaches us how not only to love, but how to forgive. If we want to learn how to be in self-control or to control ourselves, that being being of God and that character of God is already on the inside of us and that being wants to show us how to control our tongue, control our actions, control the way that we maneuver in the earth, but that must be guarded. That that must become something in our lives that becomes the most critical piece. Lord, Lord, renewing me a right spirit. Hallelujah. Do a work in me. Hallelujah. That should be our desire each and every day. So that is a diligent work. So we want to look at four attributes today, which is the eyes, the ears, our conversation with our mouth and the company that we keep. All right. Eyes, ears, conversation and company. We'll begin with the eyes. Hallelujah. Let's start with the eyes. Remember, we're talking about keeping our heart with all diligence. Matthew 6, verses 22 through 23. Jesus said this. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thy eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you be darkness, how great is that darkness? So Jesus gives us a, an insight into what, how, how things get into our heart by what we watch. The things that we take in through our eye gate. Now, obviously, we don't want to be, you know, hiding from the things in the world. We want to be conscious of what's going on. So therefore, we must, we must be wise in how much we intake through these eyes. If the things in the world are capturing you more than the things of God, then the darkness of this world is going to consume our hearts. And then we'll begin to wonder why we have these vile imaginations and these dark thoughts in our lives where we want to do where heinous things want to come to our mind. It's because we continue to watch those things that 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 are dark. Uh, sometimes you got to cut that Netflix account off and, and turn the word of God on. Sometimes you got to set your eyes on the word of God. Sometimes you got to set your eyes, turn that YouTube channel to someone preaching the gospel so that you can see the life of God flowing into your eyes. Sometimes you got to turn something on that shows love being poured out, people giving into other people, sowing into other people's lives because you need light to come into your eyes. Light will reveal the darkness that is in our hearts. Hallelujah. Because each and every one of us has a work to do in our heart. I, I don't know. I don't know about you, but I know that for me, there are things that God is continually manifesting as I enter light entered into my eyes, as I look at the word of God, because the word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The, the entrance of the word brings light. So when we set our eyes on the word of God, there is a light that shines in our eyes. And if that light comes from the word of God, it brightens up the whole man. 
and it causes us to see clearly what the will of God is for our lives and also see clearly what it is in our lives that needs to be dealt with. Those things that need to be laid down, the weights and the sins that have so easily beset us. So in that time where you're in that cave, while you're sitting in that cave and God is saying, why are you here? There are things that he needs you to see that may be hindering you from doing what he has called you to do. There may be things in you that he needs you to see that maybe you've kind of been somewhat hesitant to do. But now he needs you to see him because he needs you to become bold in accepting it and in walking into it. Glory to God. Because you have been made in Christ. You are his masterpiece. You have been made for good works. Therefore, you got to keep your eyes open for goodness. You got to keep your eyes open for the goodness of God, to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Glory to God, because the enemy would love to keep you filled up with the news. Keep those things before your eyes. But those things, if you don't if you don't if you don't guard it and you don't take it as a grain of salt, you will begin to let those things become your good news. They'll become your only news. So he says the eye is the lamp, the eyes. They, they allow the light to come in or they allow the darkness to come in. So now the question becomes, what are we watching? What do we allow ourselves to watch? What is taking our sight? How many feeds are we looking at as we scroll our, 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 our posts each and every day? What are we allowing to get in our eyes? Sometimes you have to shut those things down to see what God sees. Faith has the eyes of the spirit. And God wants us to live in that realm because that realm is undefeated. The second section is to guard your ears. So one is to guard your eyes, be diligent about what you watch. The other one is to be diligent about what you hear. Let's go to Luke 8, 16 through 18. There, Jesus says, no one lights a lamp and hides it in a clay jar or puts it under the bed. Instead, they put it on a stand so that those who come in can see the light. Notice we're talking about the light for there is nothing hidden that will not be disclosed and nothing concealed that will not be known or brought out in the open. Therefore, consider carefully how you listen. Whoever has will be given more. Whoever does not have. Even what they have will be taken from them. A powerful statement in Luke eight. He says, be careful how you hear, how you listen. Let's go to Mark four verses 24 through 25. It says here, consider carefully what you hear. He continued with the measure you use. It will be measured to you and even more. Whoever has will be given more. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. So let's capture this. In Luke, he says, be careful how you hear or listen. In Mark, he says, be careful what you hear. Which one is it? It's both. We have to take it again. He says the measure with which you measure it, how you hear a statement is very vital to the way you respond to a statement. The way that we hear a thing, if we measure it with great capacity, like a dump truck, then we put our faith in that word like a dump truck because faith cometh by hearing. Fear also comes by hearing. So if we measure what we read and hear on the news as the only way that a fit situation is going to to take place, then the fear of that thing will overtake us and rob us of the light that we have in Christ. This is the way that the enemy wants to come in and infiltrate the heart. And we begin to say things with our mouths that we've heard from a source that isn't God. And when we open our mouth and speak, we make a we make a decree or a contract in the realm of the spirit. We tie ourselves to something that is about to cause that to come to life for us. Hallelujah. So we have to guard what we hear. We have to guard what we see. We have to allow ourselves to measure those things to the word of God. If what we're hearing 
did not come from the word of God, that we must we must measure it in a small way. We heard it. It did happen. It is factual. But the truth of the matter is in the realm of the spirit. So we have to keep the word of God in our ears to be able to capture those thoughts that try to cross our mind, that try to to try to get us to look at things askew in a skewed way to to take away the perception of the kingdom of God, because in the kingdom of God is a love for all mankind. And, and, and in this world that we're living in right now, we're going through so much of a divisive way that that hearts are being pulled and and, and lives are being taken and men are oppressing men and. And, and disease is hitting the land. And while all of this is going on, report after report is going on and we're seeing things and we're hearing things. And if we don't take the time to take it back into the presence of God in prayer, to go back to the word of God in study, to chat, to, to, to ask the questions and to encounter the God, the God of salvation and to seek his counsel and to understand his ways, then what we will do is we will subject ourselves to fleshly activity instead of spiritual activity and when we begin to move we'll move in the flesh instead of moving in the spirit and is what God desires is for us to move in the spirit because the change God wants to see is eternal but the moves that we make in the flesh will only be temporary anything that we do in our own power will not last for a long time but when we count when we become when we come into this co-labor with the Holy Spirit Hallelujah. When we come into a labor of love with the Holy Spirit, when the people of God turn from our wicked ways and call upon the name of the Lord and repent for the ways that we thought and repent for the actions that we've committed and repent for the, 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 the words that we said. Hallelujah. When we begin to do that, the word of God, the spirit of God, the anointing of God begins to shake the very core of our foundation. Those things begin to resonate and us that are on the mind of God. The things that hurt God begin to hurt us. Hallelujah. The lies that God is hurt by the blood that is still crying out in the streets is the blood that cries out in our hearts when we pray. The division that hurts the heart of God because in all men he's given the breath of life and it was never his desire for any person to, to oppress, to discredit, to kick out, to abandon any one human being. When that begins to become our prayer, our heart begins to hurt like his heart. But we got to guard how we hear and we got to measure what we hear because if we hear incorrectly, then we'll turn and get a wrong perspective on a situation. I'm passionate about what I'm saying and I'm not trying to yell at anyone, but this is, this is on my heart and I'm compassionate about it because God wants to see a church unified. He wants to see a world unified. He wants to see lives healed. He wants to see a world reconciled. But first, the church must be reconciled back to God. We must get back to the things in the heart of God. We must get back in the presence of God in prayer. We need to hear men praying again. We need to hear men coming together and calling upon the name of the Lord again and declaring over their households, declaring over their nation. We need to see families coming back together around the table to declare discuss the word of God and to sow the mind of God in their hearts so that we can receive divine wisdom and a divine release to step out into this world and do what God has called us to do. It's no longer time to just sit around and just be praying and not doing nothing. God is calling the church out of the four walls and he has called us to do a work and assignment. But before we step out of that cave, Hear me before we step out of the cave to do it. We must reconcile our hearts, reconcile our minds and get those things in proper alignment with the will of God so that when we do the work, it will be eternal. Hallelujah. It will be everlasting. Hallelujah. It will be influential. Hallelujah. Because it won't be our will that we're committed to. It'll be the kingdom's will. It'll be God's will that we are committed to. Two, hallelujah. So we must be careful how we hear and what we hear. There are some conversations that we are going to have with people that, that, that they're not going to be comfortable, people. It's not going to be comfortable to talk about racism. 
It's not going to be comfortable to talk about the issues that are, we are having currently in our churches. It is not going to be comfortable to have a conversation with a co-worker about some of the issues that are taking place in our world. But guess what? Those conversations must be had because where there is a conversation, there is light. There is revelation. There are words that will be heard that will bring a light, turn a light on in the life of people that will give them understanding and clarity as to where we stand as a people. If things aren't right, they need to be exposed by calling them what they are, telling the truth. The Bible says speaking the truth in love. We speak it so that we can grow. When we have these conversations, you got to be willing to hear. And measure what you hear. And how you hear, because if you hear it wrong, you will be robbed of the peace of God that was meant for you to have. So you got to guard it. Guard what you hear. You can't be in every conversation, some conversations you're not ready for. So you just got to get out of that conversation because you're not ready to hear it. If you know you haven't dealt with your anger. You don't need to be in that conversation about racism. Remove yourself. Get the heart right with God and then have the conversation. If you know that your husband, you got an issue with your wife. You need to get that straight. Take care of how you're here. Friend against friend. Capture how you hear. Because hurt people hurt people. When you're hurt, you hear with the hurt. You don't hear with healing. You hear with hurt and therefore everything is hurt. And God wants to heal that. This is the place and the time when you're with him that he begins to reconcile that in your heart so that when you go out and have that conversation, you hear with a hear, a hearing ear that is whole. And you can measure it and divide it correctly. Hallelujah. Guarding the heart. The next one is our conversation. Matthew 12, 36 and 37. But I say to you that every idle word men may speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words, you are justified and by your words, you condemn. Simple statement. Notice what God is saying. What we talk about, the words that we say are powerful because those words are spiritual. And those words produce life because they come out of the heart. That's why we got to guard what we see. We got to guard what we hear, because those things that we see and we hear are the things that we we'll end up communicating. So we have to take it in measure. Who's ruling our eyes? Who's ruling our hearts? Because whoever is ruling our eyes and who's ruling our ears and getting in our hearts is what we're going to speak out of our mouths. And by that word, you'll either be set free or by that word, you'll put yourself back in bondage. And if you've been in Christ, you are a new creature and bondage is no longer the life that God has given you. Therefore, your mouth must be full of light. It must be full of the word of God. It must be full of faith. We will see things and we will hear things that are not right. But when you speak, speak faith in truth. Speak to the reality, but speak to the reality through the lens of the kingdom of God. We speak life out of our mouths. Because God can operate on that life and bring change, not only beginning first within us. The first change is always in the individual. Before it can happen outside, it happens on the inside. So those words that we speak become life to us and the life to us is what we impart to others. So we guard our eyes. We guard how we hear. We guard what we hear here. And then we begin to take charge over this little flap under our nose to use it to speak life. James speaks about it as an unruly thing. It's hard to tame the tongue. The only thing that can tame the tongue is a yielded vessel to the Holy Spirit. That's why, again, we must be guarded in our relationship with him because he teaches us how to capture this thing so that we don't destroy life by speaking out of our mouths. Jesus said, that you say it is, it, you, the man shall not murder. But I say, if you say raka to your brother, you've committed murder. 
A gun can kill people in seconds, but word gives people a slow death. Words are powerful. So we must be mindful of the way that we communicate about one another. These mouths were made to honor. These mouths were made for thanksgiving. These mouths were made for praise. These mouths were made to build up the things of God and tear down the things of darkness. By our words, we are justified. By our words, we are condemned. How do we talk to our family members? Because this love begins at home. Sometimes we can have love for other people, but we can destroy the very people in our own house. Those things must stop. God is calling us into a higher place on a realm of thinking to realize that all men were made by him because God so loved the whole world that he gave his son. Let me continue and, and, and finish up. So our conversation, we must guard our conversation. Psalms 119, 171 through 172. My lips shall utter praise for you teach me your statutes. My tongue shall speak of your word for all your commandments are righteous. Notice what the psalmist says. My lips shall utter praise. This, these lips were meant to bring thanksgiving. These lips were meant to bring life. These, myths were, these lips were meant to bring joy into every situation. To uplift, to build up, to cause another life to flourish, to cause your own life to flourish, to take things that are in darkness and transform them by the light of your words. Hallelujah. Your words are framework for the things that God has planted in your heart. In Hebrew says by his word, the, by faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. And in his image and his likeness, we too speak by the word of God to frame our world and our life to partner with heaven in causing righteousness to rule and our hearts to be changed and our minds to be renewed to what the will of God is in the earth. So again, this must be guarded. We're talking about guarding that heart. Last one, guard the company you keep. Guard the company you keep. We wanna guard the things that come into our eyes. We want to take heed to how we hear and what we hear and how we measure those things we hear. We want to guard what comes out of our mouth because those things are sewn back into our hearts and they either set us free or they put us in bondage. So this mouth was made to give praise, to give thanksgiving, to give honor. Lastly, we want to think about where our feet go. Where do we, what positions do we put ourselves in? Sometimes we can put ourselves in the company of situations we knew we shouldn't have been in. And the reason why we got into that conversation was because we stepped into something we didn't even need to be there in the first place. And now we find ourselves having to fight our way out of something. So God is saying you got to be mindful of where you go, who you hang around, the company you keep. We've been sent into the world, but the world wasn't meant to take you. You were meant to take it. Psalms 1, 1 through 3. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth its fruit in its season, whose leaves shall not wither. And whatever he does shall prosper. I love to end it with this because God is telling the people of God when we keep ourselves in the right environment. Hallelujah. The church was meant to be an environment. The assembling of ourselves was meant to be an environment where people can thrive, can grow up in the things of God, can find out who they are in Christ and hear the gospel preached continually. The good news of the kingdom, the good news of the kingdom and see the things of God with their eyes and hear the goodness of God with their ears and step into a place of being able to declare by faith the things of God and see those things happen and begin to grow in faith, grow in Christ and renew our minds. Amen. Because when we step out into the world, there will be dark things. There will be issues that arise. But when we are caught up in faith, when we are in, in when we are engrossed in Christ, when we are enraptured, enraptured by this love with the Holy 
spirit and this connection to his voice and this desire to hear him, to see what the world is doing, but to see his movement, to hear what the world is doing, but to hear his movement and not be moved by the things we see, not be moved by the things we've heard, not be shaken by the things of this world, but hear the still small voice speaking to us, calming us, resting us, restoring us, healing us. A healed people can take healing into a broken world. A whole people can take a whole message to a whole world. A reconciled people to God can take a reconciling message to the world. My desire in this message is to challenge all of us, myself included, to continue to guard this heart of the kingdom, to guard what we allow ourselves to watch on a daily basis and to not allow the enemy to infiltrate and divide us by these, the words we're hearing, the, the actions that we're seeing, we're going to see a lot of things that are heinous and wild, but we also know what the will of God is. And there is healing for all of that. There is healing for all of that. I believe it by faith. You believe it by faith. And it is more than possible because we believe the people will be one. The kingdom will rise. We will see the glory of God in this earth. Declare what God has told you to declare. Every work of darkness come down. Every line of division come down. Every, every prejudging way come down. Every dis-ease that tries to take over and destroy the people of God must come down in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have authority. You have power because God has given it to you. Guard this inner man. Don't allow everything in. Guard this inner man. Guard the company you keep. Guard this inner man. What comes into your ears. Guard this inner man. Because God has an amazing assignment for us. I'm excited about what the kingdom is about to do. I'm excited in what God is doing in each and every one of us. Stay in the will of God. Keep enduring. Keep the faith. And you are about to see the greatest victory the kingdom of God has given to this world outside of the raising of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to see the second wave of revival. We're going to see it. We're going to see it. We're going to live it. Hallelujah. In Jesus name. Be blessed. I love you with the love of the Lord. If this ministry can do anything to help you, please reach out to us again. My email, Pastor Brian Gaither at newlifeipf.org. If we as a ministry can be a help to you, just let us know. If we can do it, we would love to, to, to support and help you. I love you. God bless.